Hi everybody, today we've been cooking venison osso buco with herb and parmesan dumplings and a lovely zingy zesty gremolata. Stick around and watch the whole Hi video. everyone, welcome to this wood-fired workshop at Manor from Devon Cooking School. In this workshop we're going to be braising venison osso buco. So he's taking a cut through the shin, we've got the bone here, this is the the osso buco bit, the bone with the hole with the marrow bone in the middle and then we've got this lovely meat which is never a tender cut of meat, it always needs nice slow cooking. It's going to take probably three hours of gentle braising to cook this. So I've got the oven warmed up, not absolutely scorching hot <clears throat> and with the last of the flame there we're going to just brown the meat a little bit before we start the braising. Push the flame to the back of the oven and use that nice hot spot on the floor to warm up the pan and in this pan I've got some butter and some olive oil. I can hear my butter sizzling away. So I'm going to go in with the first three pieces. This beautiful venison is from Piper's Farm down here in Devon. And this is just to get a little bit of colour on the outside of the meat. So those are ready to go. I've still got that lovely oil and butter in the pan. Into that I'm going to go with some vegetables. Classic onion and garlic, carrot and celery. And these you can see I've chopped them down really small. By the time these have cooked for three hours they'll have almost melted away to nothing and they'll become part of the sauce. I'm also adding flour just some plain flour into there which is going to thicken the sauce and a little bit of tomato puree for sweetness so I'm just going to cook that for a minute or two the flour and the butter and oil that was already in the pan will come together and make a sort of roux which will thicken the whole of the sauce. So salt and pepper and here I've just made a little bouquet garni from the garden so I've got bay leaves, thyme and rosemary. Nestle that in there. I'm going to sit my meat in with these. Classically we'd be adding some wine. It could be in this case we've got grape juice and a little bit of red wine vinegar so I've got a sort of non-alcoholic version. Beef stock or veal stock or game stock if you have it and we want to make sure that the liquid is just sort of certainly covering all of those vegetables and just coming up and covering most of the meat it doesn't have to cover all of it so I'm going to add a little bit of extra water tight fitting lid into the oven. I can leave those embers in there because they're going to die out in a little while. The oven's going to be falling from 180 or so so I should be able to close the door on that for three hours and not worry about it at all. <clears throat> so that's our braise in the oven and we need to be in gentle braising territory here. So we want the oven at and falling down from about 180 degrees so 5 Mississippi and down from there will be in the right zone so it's not so hot that everything is going to bubble vigorously and boil the liquids away but it's going to be hot enough that it's going to keep it at a simmer for three hours in this case quite happily if you're doing this in a steel oven it's probably uh, will be necessary to have some embers in the oven all the time and to maybe top those embers up 
once or twice through your cook to make sure it stays. Venison has been braising now for a little bit over two hours, so we're gonna have a look. If we're nearly there, then we're gonna make some dumplings and pop those on top to cook in the sauce. You can see we've got this lovely thick sauce, it smells fantastic. And I just wanna check that the meat is cooked or almost cooked, so I know I can add my dumplings. So if I feel that, it's just falling away from the bone, steaming up my glasses, breaking beautifully, so that's all, that's fantastic. Okay, dumplings, very, very simple. <clears throat> Self-raising flour, suet, vegetable or beef as you prefer, and a pinch of salt. Mix those together. Jazz them up if you like. So we've got some parsley and some parmesan. Pop that in there, mix it all up. And then enough water to bring it all together. Simple as that. A little bit of flour, doesn't need any working at all, we're just going to shape them. So just roll that into a into a log, which is just to allow us to sort of uh, eyeball the right quantities. And then just loosely shape them into a ball. They don't have to be Perfect by any means. There we are. If I sit those on somewhere where they can sort of sink into the sauce a little bit. We're gonna give them about 20 minutes with the lid on, 10 minutes with the lid off, which will just form a little bit of a crust on the top and the job is done. The other element to this dish is gonna be a gremolata. And as we're putting that together, just an opportunity to say we produce these workshops regularly. Thank you for watching this one, but if you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more. We try and provide inspiration on an almost weekly basis. <coughs> Do give us a like, and if you've got any questions about this or any aspect of wood-fired cooking at all, please put a comment below and we will answer your question. So the gremolata is just a little, uh, a little finisher. So we've got fresh parsley, the zest of a couple of lemons, and a little clove of, uh, or a teaspoon or so of uncooked garlic. And that just gives us a little bit of heat as well. And mix all of those together. And that is a gremolata. Oh, wow. What a great puff. Now we just want to crisp up the top of those and dry out the top a little bit so we get a crunchy top and a soft bottom. So another 10 minutes in the oven, the tops have dried out so our dumplings are firm on top. Sprinkle gremolata over the top and the whole thing is ready to serve. <laughs>